Hey, what's up guys? Duo here. Uh, I wanted to bring to you guys a little deck profile. I was actually at the National Championship in Rosemont uh, this past weekend. I was able to make it through Swiss, make it to day two, uh, but unfortunately I got bubbled out of top 64. I finished 8-2-1, which was the record for topping. Uh, just couldn't get good tiebreakers, so figured I'd bring to you guys my list and just show you what's up. So starting off with the monsters, we have three copies of Droll and Lockbird, uh, two copies of Eldritch the Golden Lord, and then two copies of Lord of Heavenly Prison. Uh, I felt like this was a really good monster lineup. Uh, obviously, you really want to go two and two on these. You need to have as many playable cards as possible, so you really don't want to get bogged down with uh, three of's since you're playing a trap deck. Uh, this is the exception. I decided to put this in just as insurance in case I lose the die roll, because uh, this deck has a really hard time winning if you lose the die roll, and I felt like this was all really good. Uh, so that's it for the monsters. Obviously it's Eldritch, so there's not a lot of monsters. Uh, moving on to the spells, we are going to be playing uh, two copies of Pot of Duality, three copies of Pot of Extravagance, and one copy of Cursed Eldland. People were asking Pot of Duality, like why I played that and not Prosperity. Uh, it's really just because you don't want to conflict with these. Uh, you really want to be able to get as much cycling as possible. Uh, the one copy of Cursed Eldland, I think this card is like not that good. Um, it doesn't really get you anything that helps you defend against your opponent's stuff, but you want to play at least one copy of it because of the Lord of Heavenly Prison OTK setup, which I can show you guys maybe later. Uh, but all in all, I felt like this was a solid spell lineup. Moving on to the trap cards, so for the Eldritch package, we are playing 3 Sanguine, uh, 3 Conquistador, and 1 Wakero. The Eldritch cards are like meh outside of these two, obviously. Uh, Wakero is not the best, but you really do want to play it. You want to have at least one copy for Snow and for the Eldritch Mirror, um, but really it's more so just about Conquistador and Sanguine. I felt this lineup was fine. And then for our Floodgates, we are playing the Big 12 Degeneracy Package. Uh, unfortunately, there is not, outside of Skill Drain, there isn't really a good, like, uh, one beats all Floodgate. So, like, obviously, Despia is going to be fine with their community only one. Sword Soul doesn't care about rivalry. So, because of that, you kind of just have to play them all and just throw the kitchen sink at them and you can take them out in siding and do whatever you want, but you really gotta play all 12, and I think that it is the correct decision. I was trying to like be nitpicky, and I was trying to play like nine, like maybe I cut this, maybe I cut this, but honestly, like I feel like just playing all 12 is optimal right now. And then for the sort of combat traps, we have two copies of Dogmatica Punishment, uh, three copies of Solemn Strike, and then three copies of Compulsory Evacuation Device. Uh, this was the goo for sure. Uh, I felt that this card carried me. Solemn Strike, obviously a good card. Uh, you really have to play it in the trap decks uh, for board breaking purposes. Uh, this is insurance number two if you lose the die roll. Uh, so because it's a counter trap, your opponent can't respond to it, so it makes your floodgate activation safe. Uh, I felt that Compulse was really good, uh, partially because of uh, Despia. You really don't want to send their stuff to the graveyard, uh, so like Compulse shuffling it back into the extra deck makes it much easier to deal with the deck. And then, I mean, because it's mostly being used against extra deck monsters, it basically serves the same purpose as uh, Dogmatica Punishment. Uh, I play two punishment because it's a hard once per turn and sometimes there isn't a good spot to activate this. Sometimes like, especially going second, you don't have a monster with 2500 or less attack to target so you can't use Intis. And if you aren't sending Intis or like Skull Knight or any of those, this card just becomes trash and it locks you out of your Gustav Max OTK. So I just decided to cut down on two. Uh, I really like the Compulse, uh, I know people were a little hype seeing this on Feature Match, so yeah, I definitely like this. And that'll do it, it is a pure 40-card uh, deck, uh, so you'll love to see it. And then let's move on to the extra deck. So for the XCs, we have uh, three copies of Constellar Pleiades and three copies of Super Dreadnought, Rail Cannon, Gustav Max. 
Uh, I feel like you gotta play three and three, uh, especially this one. This one's super important, and Vladis does come up uh, enough to warrant playing three copies of it. Uh, Zeus was almost never coming up in testing, so I just decided to cut it entirely, and I don't really think that there was a good spot where it would have come up uh, outside of like, you know, or I mean in the tournament, I don't think it, there was an opportunity where I really wanted to summon uh, Zeus, so I wasn't really missing that. And then for the links, we have two copies of Line of the Light Charm Illuminous, one copy of Hippo Shingen, and one copy of Link Spider. Uh, Line of the Light Charm and Illuminous, I originally was just playing three Hippo Shingen, but an interaction came up in testing where you can summon Line of the Light Charm or Illuminous to then get your opponent's Eldritch that's in their graveyard. And that's actually like really huge in the mirror. I also summon this against Sword Soul for game. Uh, to bring out their Ecclesia from the graveyard. So that was really good. Hippo Shingen, I do like. Um, I, it gives a better offensive boost. It helps you out like pesky monsters like the Boral and Dragon uh, so that your monsters can be like bigger and whatnot. But uh, Lina also only requiring one light is also a pretty big thing. Link Spider, obviously to get your traps into the graveyard, pretty standard. Uh, then for our fusions, well really our Dogmatica Punishment targets, uh, we have the standard Triple Intis, uh, we have our Fossil Warrior Skull Knight, and then our Wind Pegasus Adding Nister. Um, obviously you're going to be sending Intis 99% of the time, but you do want to have these around. Uh, Pegasus, I think this is, uh, it has a lot of use like in the mirror match. Uh, and like Despia, just because shuffling stuff back is way better than destroying it. Uh, Skull Knight, pretty standard with like Dogmatica cards, and obviously the Intus is pretty standard. Um, and then we have our side deck. So I play the third copy of Lord of the Heavenly Prison. Uh, you really want to be able to have three copies of this if you're going first in games two and or three. Um, just being able to be immune to Lightning Storm and Feather Duster is incredibly important. And uh, setting up the OTK is pretty good, but like you don't want to main deck three of this. And then we have three Lava Golem and three Sphere Boy. Uh, you have to break boards. This deck sucks at breaking boards unless you open unless you open like Droll to stop them or you open Strike. And even if you open Strike, you have to open a Floodgate. So just adding these makes everything much more simpler. These out pesky stuff like uh, Psychic and Punisher. This deck can have a hard time outing uh, Boral and Dragon. You also have a really hard time outing. So playing these just makes your life a lot easier going second in the later games. Uh, for the back row removal, uh, two copies of Twin Twisters and one copy of Feather Duster. Uh, I was playing Cosmic, but I felt like there were just too many times where my opponent, like, even with decks like Flunder and Swordsoul, like, they would just still set two cards. And so if you're playing Cosmic, then you have to kind of guess the 50-50 or basically just die. Uh, and Twin Twisters really isn't much of, like, a liability. Even if you're only destroying one, you can still discard your Eldritch cards and get their effects in graveyards, so it's really not that big of a deal. Obviously, Feather Dust is broken. I think this card should be banned, but I'm a disgusting Eldritch player, so take it with a grain of salt. Uh, two copies of Summon Limit. This was... I think that this is the best card, or the best Floodgate in the game, uh, if you are going first. It's obviously terrible if you're going second, but I realized in testing and in some of the tournaments that I went to before attending Nationals that I was struggling uh, in matchups where I had to side out a lot of Floodgates. So like a good example would be like uh, against Salamangrate. Really against Salamangrate, this, like these two don't do anything. Like, they're all going to be basically fire cyber monsters, so you're going to be siding out goes and end rivalry, but you are a floodgate deck, you need to rely on floodgates, so you need something to replace these. And I felt like Summon Limit was just the generic good answer, like it beats Sword Soul, Sword Soul I was having trouble against in late games, um, and then it's just good, like it's just good against basically everything, every combo deck and whatnot, it just completely stops them. And then for the last side deck card, uh, we are just going to be playing our three copies of Solemn Judgment. Uh, this should be pretty self-explanatory. You got to stop your blowout cards. Uh, got to stop just 
it's just a good card but it's not the best going uh or putting it in the main it's not very good so uh i just decided to play that three in the side so that'll be it uh thank you guys for watching uh feel free to like the video subscribe to the channel if you feel like it i'm gonna try to put out more content uh follow my twitch at twitch.tv slash really duo or actually it's duo ygo i changed it it's duo ygo now so definitely drop a follow show some love but i'll see you guys in the next one peace